the weather sure hasn't cooperated lately as far as getting us in the mood for gardening, but I tell you, if you'll stop by your local retail garden center, you'll really get in the mood for gardening because there's a lot of new and exciting color and plant selection. And today we're in Tulsa at Southwood Landscape and Nursery. And joining me is Mr. Joe Schulte, the owner. And Joe, you're gonna help us talk a little bit about some of the new things that are on the market here. And Perennials are very popular. Why don't you start off in telling us a, a little bit of a range there of one you have? Okay. Uh, to begin with, this is a, a perennial salvia that uh, is becoming more popular. And of course, it's not in bloom now. It has probably pretty purple flowers, lots of color there. And so we're getting a little early on some of them, aren't we? But how does that fit in with the rest of the salvias? Okay. This one uh, being a perennial, there is another group, uh, the re salvia which also has a purplish blue color, uh, but it's what we would call a tender perennial. Uh, in most areas of Oklahoma, it really wouldn't be a, a full perennial. In the south, it may overwinter easily. Farther north, it would be questionable, just depending on how, how severe the winter might be. Uh, and of course, uh, the one that many of the Oklahoma gardeners know already is the, the annual salvia. Okay. This is uh, one called um, Red Hot Sally. Okay. Now that's kind of the characteristics that are going anyway. We have a lot of annual type plants, but sure enough, if we search hard enough, we can find a perennial type. And you've got another example there too, don't you? Yes. Of course, this is the, the annual alyssum, which is used in the gardens throughout Oklahoma. Um, not really a new one, but one that's sort of new to the trade is uh, a perennial alyssum. Okay. Um, now it certainly has bright uh, yellow flowers, about the same size and texture as the annual, um, but, but will do well um, for the most part as a perennial. The only thing it really doesn't like is wet feet. Right. So over, too, over watering it, huh? Too much water. Now there's a, a lot of confusion sometimes on another characteristic or plant we're talking about here. There's annual periwinkle or vinca. You've got some uh, perennial ones here. What do we have here that's new? This is um, a new perennial periwinkle that um, has a, a small white flower and will overwinter and certainly come back year after year. Uh, most of the flowering occurs in the spring and then sort of tapers into summer uh, is completed flowering more or less by the 4th right. of July. Now we've heard of Vinca minor and major. That's the same thing, only here we just have new selection and color, right? You've got another attractive one there. What is that one? It's a uh, purple variety. Uh, Normally you would plant these about uh, 18 inches apart in this one gallon size pot and it would spread in nicely over about a one year period. Okay. Now another very popular uh, perennial type things are the ornamental grasses. What have you got in store for us there? More new grasses coming out all the time. Uh, I've got a couple here. This is a, uh, uh, a variegated Japanese forest grass. Um, it uh, will do fairly well in shade and will maintain this nice yellow color throughout the summer. Uh, this is a new one also, a very dwarf grass called Carex, and uh, a very short plant would not get over about six inches tall and would be good for a, uh, a shady garden also. So and I guess that's where the nice things coming on the ornamental grasses, most of them are more full sun where we've got some options now in, in shade. And I think that's what's so nice about perennials too, Joe, is that we're not really restricted to full sun. There's a lot of choice for full shade and, and partial shade too, so that's very exciting. Mm -hmm. Now what about the iris here? What's so different about it? Well, this iris is uh, it one that blooms in the spring and then also mid to late summer will come back and bloom again. Okay, so, so you might re-blooming re iris. iris. Okay. Now, of course, the heaviest bloom would be in the spring, and then you may see 30% of that in the fall or late okay. summer. All right. So an, another perennial, but of course you've got a woody ornamental there that's uh, kind of hid with some of our other pots. What, what is so special about that particular one? Well, this plant is an oak leaf hydrangea. Uh, it's not in bloom right now, obviously, but uh, the advantages of this, it's a, a plant that, a woody ornamental plant that does well in shade and gives a nice hydrangea type foliage texture and then almost pure white blooms mm -hmm. into the summer months. Now this is a new cultivar too, and that, that has a little bit showier flower, I guess, called what, snowflake? It's called Minnesota snowflake, and um, a fairly new variety. Okay. It, it does not get as big as some of the other oak leaf hydrangeas. Now of course this is deciduous too, we want to point that out probably. Right. Now Joe, 
what if someone reads about a new cultivar in a magazine or hears about one through a, a, a friend or something? What is the best way to, to approach their garden center personnel about getting those types of things introduced into the garden center scene, into the landscape? What advice would you have for a gardener to get, you know, to start carrying new things and more choices? Well, we try to respond to people's requests for new plant material. And we also try to watch the magazines and the research information that comes out of the various universities so that we could go ahead and stock these new varieties of, of all the different plants. Sure. And over the past several years, we've seen a, a tremendous variety of new varieties coming out. Mm -hmm. Now, a, a lot of times if someone came and asked you, you, you would try to find it, I, I assume, or, or look through the industry and see if it's available. If it's not available, how long does it take to, I mean, kind of explain the process just quickly about wholesale, retail, that kind of thing. Okay. Uh, it, it more or less starts at the retail level where we start getting requests for new varieties. Then requests from the retailers to the wholesalers it takes two to three years really to get uh, a popular new variety into the system. And then, uh, even that two or three year period of time, it may be a limited availability. Sure. And then as time goes on, the plant becomes more and more popular and it will replace older plants right. that uh, may not have the flowering capability or the cold hardiness or, right. or some other specific trait. So it's an ever-changing industry and that's exciting about it. That's right. And of course on these hard to find plants, initially they're going to be more costly and sold maybe in bigger containers and then the variation that changes there I guess too. That so, is correct. Joe, thank you very much for spending some time with us. Uh, spending time here is really exciting and does help us get in the gardening mood. And I'd encourage you to be sure and go out to your full service retail garden center and see what's new in your area.